What's the neuroscience behind emotional intelligence and how does it affect us in our lives? Well, that's what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. So hey, let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel, I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. If that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. Do you have your coffee? Let's go. So the neuroscience of emotional intelligence, what does that mean exactly? Well, our EQ is a crucial measurement of our ability to understand ourselves and other people and to identify and regulate emotion. Guess who has a very low EQ? Probably your narcissist. The EQ can predict our career success, our relationships, and more. So it's really an important and highly valuable asset to have, right? Emotional intelligence appears to correlate with IQ and it is generally thought that you can train your emotional intelligence by learning to better understand your motivation and the motivations and the actions of other people. How about that? Who do we know that could benefit from that? Narcissist? Oh yeah, good, okay. But while emotional intelligence can certainly be broken down into a series of learnable abilities, it is also strongly linked to our personalities and to the neurological processes. In many ways, our capacity for understanding emotions and controlling our own emotions is biological, as in we were born that way. But stick with me and we're gonna talk about how all of this works, okay? Let's start with emotions. Our emotions are generally regulated by neurotransmitters and by hormones that our body releases in response to a range of different stimuli. So a good example of that would be when the body releases endorphins or feel-good hormones and these act as antidepressants which help us combat pain and stress. They're produced when we think about people we love and when we're very happy. Oh, and also when we exercise. Meanwhile, we also produce cortisol, the stress hormone. We do that when we think about things that make us anxious or when we wake up to our alarm clock, cortisol. We produce norepinephrine when we're scared, melatonin when we're tired, and dopamine when we're focused and motivated. Ultimately, these chemicals tell our brain how we should feel about certain things, whether we should remember them and how our body should respond. But everyone has different levels of these chemicals, meaning some people are just naturally happier than other people. The good news is that tools like cognitive behavior therapy can teach us to control our reactions to things by seeing them in a different way, reframing as it were. This is the first step toward better emotional intelligence. Let's talk about empathy. Empathy, it turns out, is controlled by mirror neurons, okay, which fire in the brain when we see other people. When we see someone get rejected by a crush on TV, our mirror neurons fire off and we feel sad for that person. Likewise, when we see someone smiling at us, our mirror neurons fire and we produce serotonin and we feel happier, see? <laughs> this is what gives us empathy. This is what largely makes it possible for many of our social, social interactions. At the same time, when you see someone smile, you will tend to automatically copy that gesture and smile yourself. This in turn can lead to something we call facial feedback, which basically means that we produce neurotransmitters that are keeping in with the expression that we're pulling. So what does that mean? It means if you smile, your body is programmed to make you feel better. How about that? Your body recognizes that that smile means happy and it gives you more of those happy hormones, happy neurotransmitters. So if you wanna feel better, try smiling. Yeah, it works. <laughs> all right, that's all I've got for you today. Tell me, how do you feel about emotional quotient? How do you feel about EQ? Here's the question of the day. Do you think that you have a high EQ or a low EQ? Do you think that even if you have a high EQ, do you think you can benefit from more knowledge about the EQ? And how do you think EQ fits with narcissism? I'll tell you a little tip. It doesn't. <laughs> Most narcissists have very low EQs. We can talk about that in another video though. I'm gonna wrap up for now. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about this. If you'd like me to produce more videos on EQ, let me know in the comments and give me a like, all right? I'll see you soon. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. See you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world.
Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot, take it now, and the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.